In this video, we are going to explore some basic rules of exponents. More specifically, we are going to look at positive integer exponents, zero exponents, and negative integer exponents. First, let's just take a look at some basic rules of positive integer exponents. When we have an exponential expression like we see here, we have the number 2 being raised to the third power. The 3 is the exponent and the 2 is the base. So the base is the number that is being raised to the power of the exponent. So this is 2 to the third power. The exponent tells us how many factors of the base that we should multiply together. So when I look at the expression 2 to the third power, I see that the number 3 is in the exponent spot. This tells me that I should multiply together 3 factors of the number 2. So the 3 in the exponent spot tells me I have 3 factors of the base, which is 2. So factors are numbers that you multiply together to create a larger number. So if I have 3 factors of 2, that means I have 2 times 2 times 2, which equals 8. So I can assume that 2 to the third power is equal to 8. Now that we've looked at the basics of positive integer exponents, let's fill out this table to see some patterns for recognizing how to simplify zero exponential expressions and also expressions with negative exponents. So in the first row, I have 2 to the fourth power. So we know that that means I have four factors of 2, so 2 to the fourth power would equal 16. 2 to the third power tells me I have 3 factors of 2, which gives me 8. 2 squared tells me I have 2 factors of 2, which is 4. And 2 to the first power means I just have 1 factor of 2. So I'm not multiplying it by anything. It's just 1 factor of 2. So 2 to the first power is just equal to 2. Now, notice the next expression is 2 to the 0 power. This is where you want to be really careful and make sure you're looking at patterns. Many people quickly look at this and think, oh, it's just 0. 2 to the 0 power should just be 0. Well, not really. 2 times 0, yes, that equals 0. But I'm not multiplying 2 times 0. I'm taking 2 and raising it to the 0 power. What does that mean? Well, in order to figure that out, we need to look at the patterns we've created in the table so far. So as I look um, vertically down my table, my 2 to the 4th power gave me 16, and then 2 to the 3rd was 8. From 8, I went to 4, and from 4, I went to 2. So I want to look at those numbers, 16, 8, 4, 2, and see how I went from one number to the next. Well, I just need to look at it to recognize that I'm dividing by 2. 16 divided by 2 gives me the next row, which is 8. 8 divided by 2 gives me the next row, which is 4. 4 divided by 2 gets me to the next row, which is 2. So if I continue the pattern to answer the simplified form of the next row, I just need to divide by 2 one more time. So if I take the number 2 and divide by 2, it just equals 1. So that tells me that 2 to the 0 power is equal to 1. That's really important. That's going to be our 0 exponent rule. Any base raised to a zero power is always going to equal the number one. I could have created this table with any base. I could have done four to the fourth power, four to the third, four to the second power, four to the first, four to the zero power, and I still would have wound up at one. Now we're gonna move into those negative exponents. So again, we might um, want to mistakenly say that two to the negative first power would be negative two. But remember, we're not multiplying 2 times negative 1. We're taking 2 and raising it to the negative first power. So let's continue with our pattern of dividing by 2. So my last row, the answer was 1. Well, if I do 1 divided by 2, I get 1 half. So if I continue my pattern and I take 1 half and divide it by 2, you might be thinking, okay, I know I'm going to get 1 fourth, but let's look at where that comes from. So I'm dividing by another factor of 2. So I had 1 half, which is just 1 over 2. Well, if I divide by another factor of 2, now I'm doing 1 divided by 2 squared, which is equal to 1 fourth. If I divide by 2 again, now I have 1 divided by 2 cubed, which is equal to 1 eighth. And if I divide by 2 one more time, now I have 1 divided by 2 to the 4th power, which is 1 over 16. 
So you'll see as we get into the negative exponents, our answers don't become negative. Our answers become fractions. And hopefully you see the symmetry in this table. Notice how when I evaluated 2 to the 4th power, my answer was 16. We'll jump down to 2 to the negative 4th power. The simplified answer is 1 over 16. Notice how you don't get a negative answer, but you get the reciprocal of what you had for the positive exponent. So 2 to the 4th power becomes 16. 2 to the negative 4th power becomes 1 over 16. Okay, let's recap real quickly here. So first we looked at a positive integer exponent. So if I have 2 to the 3rd power, that means I have 3 factors of 2, which multiplies to 8. So those are the, or that is the rule for our positive integer exponent. Next, we looked at what happens when we had a 0 exponent. So our 0 exponent rule tells us that any base raised to the 0 power is always 1. Now let's look at our negative exponent rule. So what you want to remember about the negative exponent rule is that you always want to think about the reciprocal. So if I have 2 to the negative third power, that's equivalent to 1 over 2 to the third power. But notice when you take the reciprocal, the exponent that was negative 3, it now becomes positive 3. So 2 to the negative third power becomes 1 over 2 to the positive third power. Let's go ahead and take a look at some practice problems. In number one, you see we have a positive integer exponent. Now we also need to be careful that we follow our order of operations here. The way this is written, this is three times four to the second power. So the base of four is what's being raised to the second power. The number three is not being raised to the second power. So according to order of operations, I do exponents before multiplication. So this becomes three times 16 for a final answer of 48. In number two, this is my zero power rule. Anything raised to the zero power is always one. Let's look at number three. Three is similar to problem number one. In number three, I have the number negative four times the base of five being raised to the zero power. So only the five is being raised to the zero power. So when I do exponents first, this leaves me with negative four times one for a final answer of negative four. In problem four, I'm going to use my negative exponent rule where I take the reciprocal. So six to the negative first power is the same as one over six to the positive first power. In number five, again, I want to make sure I'm doing, I'm doing exponents before I do multiplication. So this is two times the base of four to the negative third power. So only four is the base here. So I have two times one over four to the third power. And I know that 4 to the third power is 64. So I'm going to write my 2 as 2 over 1 because I'm multiplying it by the fraction 1 over 64. And after I multiply and simplify, I get 1 over 32. In number 6, my base is x. So x to the negative second gives me the reciprocal of 1 over x squared. So remember, think the reciprocal and the negative exponent becomes a positive exponent. Let's take a look at number seven. This is five times x to the zero power. So again, five is not part of the base. So I do exponents here first. Only x is being raised to the zero power. So this is five times one or just five. In number eight, I have four times x to the negative second power. So again, only x is being raised to the negative second power. So I want to think about the reciprocal. So that's going to become 1 over x squared. So this becomes 4 times 1 over x squared. But when I take the reciprocal, remember that negative exponent becomes positive. If it helps, you can write 4 over 1. And when you multiply in the numerators, you get 4. And when you multiply the denominators, x squared. So this becomes 4 over x squared. Now, 9 is slightly different. Notice the base of 4x is now wrapped in parentheses. So now the base is the term 4x, not just the x by itself, like in problem number 8. So this becomes 1 over the base of 4x raised to the positive second power. So remember, when you square something, it means to multiply it by itself. So this is 1 over 4x times 4x. So when I multiply the 4s, I get 16, and x times x is x squared. 
So this becomes 1 over 16x squared. Now, number 9, that um, also leads into some rules that we're going to learn later in class, but I just thought it was nice to give you a little sneak preview of it right now.